Hello. Hello. Welcome to the Halloween special. I'm here today with my friend and historian, Dr. Cat, and we're here to make a documentary for you all on the history of witches. But first, we need to find out what people already know about witches. So we're off to go interview a few locals to find out. Can I just get your permission, please, to say that you're happy for this interview to be aired on YouTube? Yeah. yeah. So, what do you know about witches? Witches? Ah, uh, well... I know they're often old women and have tall, pointy hats, don't they? Oh, witches, yeah. Usually have a little black cat by their side, don't they? Or is that a frog? Is that a frog? Good evening, madam. I just wondered if you knew anything about witches. Witches? <laughs> no. Why? Who's asking? Okay, so we are ready. We have our backpacks. We have the tent. Yes. And we have our whole load of supplies. Cat, what have you got there? Supplies. Right, so where are we heading to then, Cat? We're off into the deep, dark woods. Oh, why is that then? Is this wood supposed to be haunted? Oh, is there an evil legend of a witch on top of a hill? Oh, has this wood got a long and torturous history of campers mysteriously disappearing? No, we couldn't find a museum with available dates. Plus, it's a wood, so spooky. Halloween special, isn't it? Oh, okay. Fair enough. You filming? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, where are we off to first then, Dr. Cat? Well, in order to talk about the history of witches, I to take you on a journey through time. Yeah, I've got the map, right? Yeah. Got it right here. So, we need to head to the east of this clearing, right to the very start of Tudor England, to the year 1486. Okay, so here we are. We seem to have reached the first clearing in the woods, the year 1486. But whoa, whoa, what do we have here? Whoa, whoa, what do we have here? Ian, if you've got that camera turned on, can you turn that camera yeah. on? If you've got it turned yeah, on, yeah, we yeah, need to on, get this on, on camera. On. What have we actual proof of supernatural phenomena in our first clearing? Whoa, whoa. BAFTA, here we come. Lauren, Lauren um, just calm down. I came and set this up earlier, so this was... This is me. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> That's a relief. You have me there for a minute, Dr. Cat. This is really realistic. All right, action. So we begin our journey at a time when religious belief, a hunt for a scientific answer, and also an understanding that there was magic in the world all coexist. People are religious, but they also believe in the supernatural, in things like witches, demons and changelings that they might be out to cause you harm all of these beliefs could fairly happily coexist in the early tudor mindset so believing in magic wasn't necessarily a bad thing no not necessarily i mean on the one hand you might believe that there are witches out there to cause you harm but you might also go and visit a cunning woman who to you might be performing spells before your eyes but these are spells that were set out to help these cunning people might come and help to deliver your baby or help you when you were sick. They might also help you to keep away a bad witch intent on doing you harm. Okay, so I'm afraid of witches entering my house. I come to see you. You're a cunning person. And what might you suggest I do to protect my home? Well, I'm glad you asked. I might suggest that you have yourself or someone else make up one of these. It's a witch bottle. You fill it with all sorts of everyday objects and it's supposed to keep away witches. Okay, so what do we have in this one here? It's a very traditional recipe. Okay. That is nails and urine. Ugh, I don't want that. And the thing behind this one was? Well, it's supposed to counteract a witch's curse and punish her by giving her a painful wee. I can cut. Whose wee is that? I don't know. It's not mine. Is it leaking? A little bit. Right, action. <coughs> okay, so why do we have a pair of shoes hanging from the trees? Well, Lauren, I thought you'd never ask. 
Shoes are known for their protective qualities. It was thought that they could confuse a witch or other supernatural entity. So you thought you'd leave a pair of shoes in the tree today just in case we were followed by a witch? Well, exactly. You can never be too careful. We have found shoes in lots of houses. People used to put old shoes in attics, in the walls, just to keep people safe. Mm. And what about witches' marks? Is that another one? Good question, yes. Witches' marks are carvings in houses and other buildings and they tend to be around doorways or around windows, places where a potential witch might come in to keep them away. Our journey here. Let's lean up against maybe. Yeah, okay, you ready? Yeah. Let's give it a go. Action. Okay, so why have we started our journey here then, Dr. Cat? Surely people believed in witches before this point. Absolutely. We've got evidence that from at least the Roman times there was a belief in witches. But this year that I brought you to is really important. This is the year in which the Malleus Maleficarum is published. What? Sounds like a magical spell, the Malatus Madadarum. The Malleus Maleficarum. The Mollius Maladadarum. No, the Malleus. You know what? Doesn't matter. This is the Malleus Maleficarum. It's written by a German clergyman called Hans Kramer, and essentially it tells you everything you need to know about how to find and hunt a witch. It's full of a series of questions, all you need to know about witches in this period. Wow. Okay. How? How witches injure cattle in various ways. Okay. There's a witch with a pail between her legs. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Cut. Okay. Have you composed yourself? Yeah. Right, okay. Let's okay. try again. Take <coughs> 52 mm -hmm. action. Okay. So, how witches injure cattle in various ways. Something about a witch with a pail between her legs sticks a knife or some instrument in the wall um, and goes to milk the knife. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and then she summons the cow who has to have a lot of milk, the cow that she wants to hurt. Mm -hmm. um, she summons her familiar to go get the cow and milks the knife, and the milk from the cow comes out with the knife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you've got to get the devil involved too. Oh. Yeah. That to happen. Okay. Which seems totally reasonable for me. What do you think? I mean, look at this bit. It also explains in here, let's see, oh, here we go, um, why witches are more likely to be women. Because as you and I both know, we are, of course, more innately evil. So um, that explains it. Anyway, how about we move forward in time and find out how all of this plays out? We're now heading to the year... What year are we heading to, Dr. Cat? 1542. 15, oh, how are you getting all that map? 15. We should arrive by now. Oh, um... Uh, I, d I don't have the map. Did I... I gave it to you, didn't I? Uh, no, you didn't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure... Did I give it to you? Have you got the map? Oh, I don't have the map. I've been looking after the camera. I'm pretty sure I've... I've not got the map, Dr. Cat. I've, I've not got it. I've not, I gave it to you. Have you not got you the map? You didn't give it to me. Who's got the map? I, I don't have it. I don't have the map. Well, someone's got it. Right? Someone's got the map, right? I don't have the map. Oh, hold on. Oh, I don't worry. I've just remembered. I kicked it into the creek. I'm sorry. You did what? What do you mean the creek? Do you mean a river or a stream? Oh, yeah. Well, that. I, I, I kicked it into the creek because... Right, I... Didn't think it was doing us any good. Are you kidding me? I knew exactly who we were on that map. Oh my god. Okay. So we did eventually reach our next time period. The year 1542. Mm. And it is freezing. Yep. <laughs> What's with the sudden temperature change, Dr. Cat? So you're right. We're in 1542. Okay. Uh -huh. Which is during the reign of Henry VIII. Uh -huh. We are here because this is the year in which Henry and his government change the law so that witchcraft goes from being an ecclesiastical offence to being a criminal one. And it's so cold because this is the period when we are plunged into a mini ice age. 
it's very difficult. So everybody gets a bit colder, everybody is really struggling, crops are failing and livestock is getting sick and even dying. There are gonna be a lot of people that think that maybe this is a punishment from God, while others are going to think that maybe witches are at the root of it, that something has cursed them and the things that they need to survive. So is it around this time that the stereotype of the witch emerges, you know, broomsticks, cauldrons, etc.? That notion of the haggard old crone, it's probably around about this time that it begins and from this point on it becomes more and more popular. Why are witches pictured with broomsticks and cauldrons? The cauldron or the cooking pot and the broomstick are traditional things that a woman would use in their household. They are women's tools. Witchcraft is the turning upside down of appropriate female behaviour. So, of course, they keep using these female tools, but they use them improperly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other alternative is that the broomstick might connect to the broom plant which may have been used in traditional pagan practices and worship which was the form of faith in this country before Christianity arrived. Mm. So witchcraft is made illegal by Henry VIII, does it stay this way? Actually no. Henry VIII's son views belief in witchcraft as a Roman Catholic superstition so he repeals the act. However Elizabeth I she brings it back except for hers is more gentle the witch is only punished by death if it can be proven that actual physical harm has been done by one of their spells. However, after Elizabeth, we are going to see a big increase in witchcraft trials and the accusation of people being witches and being put to death because of those charges. That happens in the reign of King James VI of Scots, who later becomes King James I of England. Do you want to investigate? Does it get any warmer? Not much, but we will be walking. Okay, right, let's go. Okay, so we've almost reached our next destination, but I've got a feeling we're missing a member of the crew. Hold on a minute, where's Josh? Josh? Josh. Have you seen Josh? 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 Hang on, hang on, hang on. Which one's Josh? Who is Josh? We, we don't have a Josh in the crew? No. Oh, oh that's a relief. Oh. Okay, let's continue. It's a bit scared for a minute though. Now, have you ever wondered why so many witches were pictured having black cats? These were actually known as familiars. Um, in other words, a witch's little helper. Now, they were usually a small animal, or sometimes as tiny as an insect, but were often a black cat. Perhaps because many people had cats as pets. Now, it was believed that the witch was given it by the devil, or inherited it from another witch. And it was said that they would feed it and in return it would act out its commands and yeah Lauren that's a, that's a great explanation this is a really unflattering angle so maybe just move it a bit oh. Oh. Oh, it's much better yeah it's better it's better, oh, it's better. Yeah. now go okay so we have finally reached the year 1592 which Dr. Cat has set up to look suitably nautical. Yes. Welcome aboard the ship belonging to King James VI of Scots and his new wife, Anne of Denmark. But be cautious, for they are about to hit a terrible storm! And let's just throw in a sound effect oh. to really get the uh So this feels really ominous. Something tells me this journey didn't go too smoothly. Unfortunately, it didn't. The sea was really rough. There are storms being raised all the time. 
and ultimately there are points where it looks very like the ship is going to be wrecked maybe even sunk and everybody on board is in danger of losing their lives before long the suspicion falls upon witches so did james use the mollius molliter tartum to work out who the witch was i think you mean the malleus maleficarum and he doesn't have to because james has his own book it's called Demonology, and like the Malleus Maleficarum, it's a bestseller that helps you to identify witches and also tells you what you should do with them when you locate them, namely, put them to death. So, who did James identify as the witches? They are casting around for a suspect. Eventually, one of the first people brought in is a woman called Agnes Sampson. And Agnes Sampson is a healer and a community midwife. We think that she is probably questioned over a long period of time. Maybe they prevent her from sleeping. Eventually, she confesses and she starts naming names. She lists a number of other witches, alleged witches, who she says are in on the plot with her. They are all going to be sentenced to death. OK, so this was all in Scotland. Now, does James continue this persecution of witches when he becomes King of England? If anything, he figuratively at least takes his foot off of the gas when it comes to persecuting English witches. He will before long be warning his son Henry of the risks of believing every accusation that's brought before him. And so do you think this could have been for political reasons? I think that's very likely. James does experience in 1605 a genuine threat to his life when he, his family and his government are nearly blown up in the gunpowder plot. Additionally, it may simply be a case that he realises that it won't have quite the same level of popularity in England. OK, so this documentary making has turned out to take a lot longer than I had initially anticipated. So Dr Cat and I have decided to set up camp and get some sleep before we continue our journey. Dr Cat, are you awake? No, I'm fast asleep. You don't sound fast asleep. What was that noise? What noise? Shh, listen, that noise. What noise? That noise, shh. I can't hear anything. Shh, there it was again. It sounds like children playing in the woods. That's so creepy. Lauren? Yeah? It's half three in the afternoon. Yeah. The schools have just let out and there is one over there. Oh. Oh, that will explain it then. It's a relief. Wait. Why are we sleep at half past three in the afternoon? Because Catty needs a nappy! Oh. Okay. Right, action. Okay, so 1645, why are we here? What's going on now? Well, we're here to talk about Matthew Hopkins. He is the Witchfinder General. That's a made-up title that he gives himself. Essentially, if you think your community has a witch problem, you can invite Matthew Hopkins, or he may just turn up and tell you you've got a witch problem, and then you will pay him lots of lovely money to deal with your witch problem, to get them, to capture them, to make them confess, and then to punish them as well. Wow, so how do you do it? How did he make so many people confess? There is a process that's known as walking the witch. What this means is that you stop a person from sleeping by making them walk backwards and forwards. This might be 24, 36, 72 hours or even longer. By this point, you haven't been able to sleep even for a millisecond. Your mind will start to play tricks on you. You do need to sleep for the health of your brain. At this point, you might be hearing things, you might be seeing things, the sorts of things that he is asking you to confess to. You're going to be very suggestible in that way. On top of that, you're so desperate to sleep that you will say anything so that this will stop. I mean, this all sounds rather crazy to me. He comes along, he gives himself a self-appointed role. Why did no one come along and try and stop him? Because the backdrop to this is the English Civil War. There is Parliament fighting the king, brother fighting brother, son fighting father, neighbour fighting neighbour, and people are in chaos, and so they're looking for people to blame. So communities want to root out their witch problem, and they're willing to pay for it because they feel like the world is crumbling around them. So when does this all start to come to an end? Well, it gradually peters out over time. It loses favour and fashion. The last person officially to be executed on a charge of witchcraft in England happens in 1682. In Britain as a whole, it's 1727. That execution takes place in Scotland. But 
that's not the last person to be punished under a witchcraft act. For that, we're going to have to hop forward in time. Okay. Action. Not gonna lie, this is one of the creepiest props you've brought out so far. Well, thank you, I do try. Uh, we are here in 1944 there is an incredibly famous photograph of helen duncan with ectoplasm coming out of her nose it was in reality a kind of cheesecloth and behind her is this sort of ghostly figure helen duncan is the last person to be tried and convicted and indeed imprisoned under a witchcraft act that was on the statute books Helen Duncan is a clairvoyant medium. In 1941, she is living in Portsmouth, which is a really important naval town, particularly at this time, because it is World War II. At a seance, she channels a member of the fleet of a ship called the HMS Barham. She recounts how the ship has sunk. The problem is that they haven't released the news publicly, and they are very confused as to how Helen Duncan could possibly know. To them, there are two options. First, that they see as being unlikely, is that Helen Duncan can do exactly what she claims she can do, that she is this clairvoyant medium who can commune with the dead. The other option that they deem as being potentially more likely is that she is in communication with the Germans. There is a fear that Helen Duncan may be spying for the enemy. In later years, it is thought to be more likely that the naval authorities had told family members who were living in Portsmouth. So it perhaps wasn't quite the great secret that it was presented as. Regardless, in 1944, she has been arrested and now she is being put on trial under the remaining act against witchcraft that's on the statute books. And it's about the notion of fraudulent witchcraft, claiming you can do things to get money out of people. She is convicted and she is sentenced to nine months in prison. Right then, so that concludes our History of Witches tour through time. Indeed it does. I do think that at the heart of all of these stories, sadly, are just tales of people who've been persecuted and wrongly convicted. In many cases, people who were just a bit different. With all that being said, all this talk of witches and this wood is starting to creep me out now too. Should we get out of here? Mm. Hey, look, before we do, there's a house over there. Oh, that's not been lived in for a while, has it? Oh, should we go inside? What? Are you mad? It's way too creepy. Yeah, should we just go home? Yeah, it's better. Yeah.